The deceased remains of a male person were located in the state forest yesterday. Uh, two male persons located the, the, the body at approximately midday. Uh, we've set up an uh, investigation centre at the Cooma Police Station and with the assistance of the Homicide Investigation Unit and the QFRS, we're currently investigating that, that, the cause of the death. What uh, has the post-mortem shown? Any age? Any... Well, no, we don't have an age at this point in time. We can confirm he's a male person and uh, we're, we're currently at the, the remains are currently undergoing scientific testing to ascertain uh, you know, th th those details. We can... Um, we can elaborate that we, we do believe we are exploring the possibilities that the fire and the, the, the remains are linked. However, we don't have um, further scientific testing will, will, will bring us to that conclusion. Was there any early indication that um, this person's not a foul play or any sort of injuries? We're investigating that and we really can't confirm or deny that at the moment. Uh, you know, we are currently still examining, examining the scene and our scientific section is still there, so we really can't say definite one way or the other, um, however it is looking suspicious. Were there signs of injury? Sorry. Were there signs of uh, we, we won't know that for quite a few days yet. We're testing for that, but we won't know that for a few days. So you've got some fire investigators up here, obviously, helping you guys out? Yeah, the fire, the fire investigators have been great. They've been helping us for, uh, since yesterday. Uh, they will determine the actual seat of the fire and the pattern of the, pattern the fire took. Has there been anything found at the same belongings or anything yet that could provide you any kind of we have found a couple of things yet, but we, we can't elaborate on that yet because we haven't uh, finished scientifically examining them yet. So they're still at the scene and they're still in situ. So once we get them out, and uh, we'll hope to release them to help us identify the male person. Just how badly decomposed was the body, do you think, before what? the fire went through? We don't know that. We, um, we're we're um, currently investigating whether they, they happened at the same time. Uh, we do believe the body was there before the fire started, uh, but as to how long, we don't know. So it was charred, there were charred remains, yeah, was the body it skeletal was charred. remains, or was there still no, bush? No, there was no, there was a body, um, a charred body. So the fire was a bushfire, not a backburning operation? No, it was a bushfire, yeah. So yeah. Was, did anything come from the roadblocks that you guys had last night in terms of talking to local No, that, no we, we just figured the local people, and the main reason for the roadblock was just to stop traffic flow so we could have access to the scene. The SES are out there today seeing what they can find. Does the condition of the, the charred um, ground at the moment, does that help or hinder the operation? Well, it, it can help in some way because all the long grass is burned, burned away. However, um, as in relation to the destruction of evidence, it obviously it hinders that possibility. But the SES have been great. There's uh, over 20 of them out there today. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank those, thank those volunteers for their help today. They've been terrific. Have you had any missing persons in that area recently? We're working with the Mrs. Missing Persons Bureau and uh, they're providing us valuable information and we're canvassing all those, those people at the moment, the missing, the missing person around the area and also with New South Wales. What's the bush up there like? Is it a difficult search? Is it a wide search? No, it's not too bad actually. Like I said, it's all burnt out so it's quite easy to search. However, the destruction of evidence, obviously from the fire, is a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, an issue. Is there anything that the police need from the public at the moment? Well, we're just appealing to the public, like we said yesterday. Um, we believe that the incident occurred around the 6th or 7th of October and uh, we're appealing for anyone in the in the Mount Nimble area, the Mount Nimble Road area at Austinville. If they saw anything suspicious or saw any people in that area, if they could give us a call, uh, contact Crime Stoppers or their local police station. We'd also like to thank the people that have already called up. We've had quite a few calls over the last 24 hours and some of that information has been quite valuable. Could you narrow it down to anyone in particular that you're looking at that does no. belong to these mines? It's open-ended. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have no, we have no idea who the person is at this stage. It's pretty tough for a police investigation, isn't it, when you don't well, know who the person is? Yeah, it is, yeah. That, that's obviously our first port of, uh, port of call, is to try and identify who the person is and then ascertain why they're, you know, and where they ended up. There's no obvious signs of trauma that you can find from the post-mortem on the body? The post-mortem has been completed, but the scientist hasn't provided us the report.